Hey, time to have a look at another piece of K Wheats gear. This one's a voltage detector, part number HT100S. This is like a non contact uh, voltage detector. You just hold it near your, your wire, and um, you'll see if there's voltage there or not. So we've got instruction manual, we've got some batteries, and we've got the thing here in a little plastic bag. And there it is. It says in the manual, the positive end goes towards the front. There we go. That's on, and it looks like it's got a flashlight. Nice. And we got 70 volts to 1 kilovolt there. 12 volts to 1 kilovolt. So it looks like we've got two different ranges. 12 volt to 1 kilovolt and 70 volt to 1 kilovolt. Now I can actually test that because I have a calibrator which will give me any voltage up to just over a kilovolt. So I'll get myself hooked up and uh, we'll see what this thing does. Alright, so I've got the uh, calibrator hooked up to my multimeter. We've got 12 volts exactly AC and I've got it set to 60 hertz. And there we go. It's saying beep. It's saying 4%, 5%. I guess that's the full scale. So let's kick it up to 1,000 volts and see what happens. Okay, this one's beeping at me now because it's at 1,000 volts. Yeah. 99% on that one. And the, the bar graph is full. So it does give you a rough idea of voltage. I'll hold that up. That stuff beeping all over the place. So that does work for its uh, rated specification. So let's put it to 70 volts and see when it d stops detecting. All right, so I've got 70 volts coming in there. In the 70 volt range, not a problem at all. That is detecting fine. So let's see how low it can go before it... Uh, oh, you can see it as it gets a good connection there, a good uh, detection. The uh, beeping goes faster, obviously, when it gets to a more uh, dangerous voltage. So let's see how, how low it will go in the 70 volt range. Still at 60. Still at 50. 40 volts. Nope. Let's go back up one volt at a time. One. Two. Three, nothing there, nearly, it's nearly, there we go, I'm going to call that, fo that's 48, I'm going to call it 50. So it'll take down to about 50 volts. So that's not bad, a little bit of overhead. Right, so I'm not going to be able to do a full teardown on this thing because it seems to be all clipped together. It's not like screwed together or anything, so it's a bit hard to take apart. seems like the circuit board's either slid in from the front or the back and then the end's clipped on and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm not going to risk damaging it just to take it apart. But we can briefly talk about how these things kind of work. So if you imagine you've got a capacitor and a capacitor and there it's connected in series, a small capacitor and a large capacitor. If you apply a voltage to those, an induced voltage, uh, the small capacitor is going to charge up to a high voltage than the large capacitor. Apparently that's just the way things work. So what we've got here is a large capacitor, which is my hand, holding it through my body, down through my shoes, the insulation of my shoes to the floor. That's the large side. And the small side is the probe on here. So when you've got a wire and the insula insulation between the wire and the probe, there's your small capacitor and then the large capacitor is holding it. So that then induces a voltage which is higher in the small side than the large side and this circuit can detect that. It's got some smarts so it can figure out how much uh, of a, a voltage is across there and then it can give you a little bar graph and uh, you got the different ranges and that sort of thing. So they're pretty simple. Uh, the concept is pretty simple. They, the real basic ones just have a light that comes on. You can build the circuit with basically a, um, 
a transistor and some resistors and an LED and stuff. It's they're they're really simple when they're on the simple side of things. So yeah, this one uh, is a bit smarter than just a uh, LED lighting up, but it does work quite well on that principle. Now the the reason why this would have two different ranges, I can't speak for the engineers, but this is my guess, is that. When you are checking building wiring, like if you've got wires in the roof of a building or in the, uh, you know, through cableways and whatnot, those wires can be parallel for quite a way, you know, tens of meters up to like 50, 60, 70 meters in a bit larger building. Now, what happens if you've got one wire that's live and one wire that's not live and they're running parallel? Well, the one that's live can induce a current or induce a voltage, sorry, induce a voltage into the one that's dead. Even though that this one is turned off, you can find a voltage on there. And um, you can actually get multimeters, which have a, uh, a low impedance input, so that when you're detecting or you're testing uh, your voltages, it'll drain that, that induced voltage away. It's almost no current. It's really like a really shitty <laughs> air cord transformer. But you can detect a, uh, a voltage with a high impedance uh, meter. So... If you're looking for what's actually live and what is not actually live, if you switch this to the 70 volt range, uh, it won't detect those low voltage because it's like 12, 15, 20 volts or so that you, you can get on a uh, induced uh, induced voltage on a line. And um, as soon as you ground that, uh, it just goes away. There's there's no current behind it. So, but these can detect that. So if you switch that to the 70 volt range, that'll help to prevent any false positives. But if you do need the uh, the lower voltage sensitivity like you're in a machine that's running on 24 volts or something and you want to see which line is live then you can go to the more sensitive range so that's pretty good i like the little uh the bar graph there that shows you a rough estimate of like what sort of voltage is there from zero percent up to 100 percent. so that's pretty cool belt clip it's got a, a flashlight which is nice i like that that will be real handy in the uh in the switchboards and yeah there's not much more to say. It's uh oh, it's IP sixty six. Yeah, I did notice there was a um there's an O ring around here, and so that's uh not too bad. Warning: test known live circuit before use. Yeah, that is an important thing with these. You want to test this against a known live circuit before you go to your unknowns, just to make sure that this thing is working. Um, you don't want this you to be testing not live, not live, not live. Touch it. Oh. I'm dead, but the batteries were flat, you know, you don't want to do that. So you've got to make sure you have a known live. Yep. Beep, 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 beep. It's working. Then you can test your other stuff. Use, uh, oh yeah, circuit before use. Dual sensitivity range. 12 to 1,000 volts. 50 to 60 hertz. Yeah. Cat 3. Not a problem. It's a nice little, neat little unit. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. It works as advertised. And, um, Yeah. It's got a flashlight. Did I mention it's got a flashlight? And of course, before we go, there is the last thing to do. We've got to do the peel. Oh, yeah. So shiny. Shiny.